Assalamu alaikum. Let's let us begin. Let us begin um, with this class, O levels computer science. W210CIE, uh, and we are just going to cover an introduction. So um, I will definitely going to help you out, uh, guys, uh, with the with this labs. Basically, um, how to attempt it, uh, how to, and from where to prepare from. I was going to just mention your book. And let, let me just screen share with you. So let's be more productive. All right. And there we go. So this is the website that we were going to use again and again. I can uh, send. That is basically all level computers, but you have to include uh, sites.google.com slash site before all level computers because uh, I haven't purchased the domain name, so my bad. But this site is productive. You can find the book. There it is. This is, think of this book as a Bible of your course. All of this computer science for this labels because. Um, um, the author of this book, Helen Williams, she was the uh, C, uh, uh, head of the department of uh, computer, uh, computer, head of computer department uh, in CIE. And um, in 2015, summer's paper, inventor's paper. Um, just a minute, I, I guess somebody is with us. That is. Uh, Okay, Saad is one of another student. Wait, let's just give a minute. I just add him up. So, okay. So, let's get with the syllabus first. If you have any difficulties, just let me know. Because everything is okay. I guess Ms. Rabi is with us. Ms. Yes, sir. It's all fine. It's all fine. It's all fine. Okay. Can you see the screen share? The. Okay. 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 You have seen this site. Mm. We can uh, download syllabus from here. I've just downloaded it already. So I'm opening it. So the purpose of this class is to just have an overview of the syllabus of double two one zero, and then um, from where actually we can prepare from syllabus of both the papers P one and P two. And then later on, uh, some how to get help from the past papers and the marking scheme. Okay. So when we look into the syllabus, um, basically it's divided into two sections. Section one is the paper one, and the section two is the paper two. We have two papers uh, in double two one zero. Paper one is basically we will call it a theory paper uh, because most of uh, the parts is theory. And the paper two, that most of the part is problem solving. So, in uh, paper one, we have only one, two, three, four, and five chapters. So, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5. It is always good to remember the uh, not only the uh, chapters, but with their Parts as well. So let's get ahead with the syllabus. The binary number systems basically, that is data representation. Data representation is divided, that is the chapter one of uh, your paper one, the section one. So let's get with it. So 
purpose of today's class is, is just the introduction, so we will not go into the much details. Uh, we will just cover up all the topics that we will going to do. The binary number systems, hexadecimal number systems, and basically in uh, what uh, number system happens, you need to convert from binary to decimal, decimal to binary, binary to hexadecimal, and hexadecimal to binary. And there will be one another conversion that is from decimal to hexadecimal and decimal to binary. So these all conversions should be done. Then uh, in terms of hexadecimal, what we need to tell the students is uh, the motivation, uh, motivation behind why we are going to use the hexadecimal and why we need the bin binary number systems, why we are actually teaching you people binary number systems or hexadecimal number systems, even though we, uh, our number system is a decimal number system. So this is what is needed to be done. Then we have uh, data storage. I'm also going to open the book and uh, we're going to show you how to prepare these topics from the book. And think of that book, the book that is available on the uh, site as well here. I just have mentioned earlier that think of this book as a Bible to one zero be possible. <laughs> this, okay. <laughs> We call it, uh, why we call it Bible for 2210 is that the author of uh, the book, Helen Williams, is basically she was the head, head of uh, department of uh, computer science uh, in CIE. And in 2015, in uh, summers, in winters, and then summers of 2016, most of the questions are coming from this book. Uh, also, this book is very well written, and all the topics are covered very um, awesomely. Okay, just in a second to watch if somebody else has with me or not. Okay. So the slavers, we will going to get to the book to see all these topics from where to prepare from. So that was the data representation, the conversions from binary, hags and decimal and the data storage. Uh, we will going to discuss about data, data storage as well in detail. Let's let's little uh, let's just uh, discuss about this a little bit. Uh, in data storage, what we need to tell, uh, what we need to learn is to uh, basically again the conversions uh, from uh, bytes to kilobytes to megabytes to gigabytes. These kind of conversions should be told to the children. And, and then we have to tell uh, students about the uh, different file formats. That's very easy. Everything that comes that going uh, that going to be saved inside the computer or smartphones or tablets or laptops, whatever that will be able to save that is that file will must have to have some kind of file format. So it would be like text. It would be like uh, MP3, MP4, whatever. But we will going to tell students about JPEG, the Joint Picture Expert Group, and there again further uh, types. The MP3 that that is MPEG3 and MPEG4. So we need to tell a little more detail about those uh, topics, uh, and we need to tell them about MIDI. That is important mus uh, musical interface, musical instrument, digital interface, MIDI. So all these things are very uh, awesomely co covered in that book that we are going to see. Thus, um, you have seen the book. I guess so far. We have uh, how much do we have with us? Oh, Ms. Sabia. Yes, sir. Yeah, I guess only you are with me so far. Lekin my camp is I'm also broadcasting this whole event, so this will going to save. Um, uh, on YouTube that I can later on maybe sharing with some of the other teachers and students as well. Okay. So um, then we have communication and internet technologies. We will going to cover data representation, security aspects, and internet principles of operation. Then we have uh, hardware. 
and software 1.3 logic is very easy peasy it's very interesting to solve and tell the students students really enjoy this topic always logic is von neumann architecture the computer architecture and fetch execute cycle this is the only new topic that was included into the new syllabus and it is the most trickier one uh sometimes we have the clusters really uh, get difficulty to understand the registers how actually computer work inside the arithmetic logical unit and all that thing because uh playing games and uh, surfing internet on the computer from the outside is or on the smartphone is easy but when you get inside of it 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 get a little bit uh, boring sometimes input devices pretty easy pretty interesting and uh, output devices again memory storage media and devices that is again the part of 1.3 the hardware and software uh, it is also easy um, also related to the uh, previous knowledge of the students of 7 and 8 grade you have to tell them about ram and rom and hard disk drive and dvd digital versatile disk and all those things an operating system this is again a little bit enhanced But even though this is not pretty much boring, you just have to tell them about the um, functions of operating system, the types of operating systems, uh, and things like this. And then uh, in the hardware, the last is high versus low level control languages. This is again easy. All right. So security, security is bit enhanced. uh that is this not we are going to talk about the viruses antiviruses trojan horses uh but we also have to talk about the ssl secure socket layer that uh, we can also call it https basically http a uh, protect transfer protocol comes with s that s is ssl secure socket layer means if you are going to surf internet with http you are surfing the internet but if you want to surf it securely for example if you are going to log into the your online bank site uh you can uh, you have to log in through https so these all things will be covered um uh, things like uh denial of surface attacks that is known as dos attacks pretty common attacks among hackers that they push uh, on other species uh phishing and farming as are also the type of attacks that hackers usually push on to the other systems so uh, these need to be explained in detail uh, this is all theory basically in uh, this 1.4 security uh, all of the thing is a theory so nothing to solve here unlike in 1.3 in which we have uh, logic gates the solution part uh in um, data representation the solution part the conversion systems and other things ethics uh ethics may vary from culture to culture but we have uh, one generalized kind of ethics when it comes to internet it comes to the uh, computer world the plagiarism kind of thing you cannot copy others uh words from notes from uh, books and uh, forward them without mentioning their name um but the difference between freeware and shareware and copyright and all those things will be discussed in this thing so this is again important so that is paper 1 let's let's uh, let us stick to paper 1 and let's uh start doing something um, more interesting okay uh, one more thing uh, on the very same site Uh, you people can also find um, these uh, guest papers, paper one and paper two solved. You can download it. That is made by Sir Farhan Rahmat, a very good friend of mine, uh, and I've definitely posted this uh, his guest paper on uh, with his permission on my site, so you can get them. Uh, these are also helpful. A quick quick revision. You can also name it as a quick revision. Okay, the book. So let's download the book. So this is how you can understand. 
around 13.8 MB. It's still going to take some time. While it's taking some time, let's uh, let's do a little bit of uh, the normal system conversions. Okay. Binary conversion first. Let's do this. So, whenever we talk about conversions, either it's uh, or decimal to binding. Let's talk about binary decimal only. Uh, what they do in CIA and Christian papers, they always do this. They will going to give some fixed amount of registers, for example, like this. For example, let's call it four bit register. Now, why this is four bit? Because one, Two. Basically, that is the third bit, and that is the fourth bit. But when we power them, when we power these bits, when we mention the power of each bit, going to have power one. The second bit will going to have power two. The third bit will going to have power four, and the fourth bit will going to have power four, uh, power eight. And how's that? That is being was we are following this formula. That is two raised to power n. So, for example, if this is the first bit, so 2 raised to power 0, that will become what? 1. This is the second bit. This is the third bit. And this is, sorry, this will become 2. And three. So this is clear. So the first bit will going to have power two raised to power zero, and it will become one. Anything have power zero will become one in mathematics. So it, this bit will going to have power one. The second bit will going to have uh, power two raised to power uh, one, two, so and so on. So remember this pattern: one, two, four, eight, and let's let's move ahead. Okay, so for example, if we have a decimal number, sorry, we are uh, converting a binary decimal. So let, let us have this binary number. That is 1011, and we need to convert this number into its decimal equivalent. So I'm putting the base, base 10 here in base 2 just to make sure that this number is a binary number and this the number that we are going to find is the decimal number so the base are used to mention that number okay so if you need to convert this 1101 1, that is the binary number into the, it's, it's a decimal equivalent that's pretty easy uh, just remember the pattern just let me rewrite the number that is 1101 one. How many bits are there? One, two, three, and four bits. And how we power? And how we are going to power these bits? Is like this: one, two, four, and eight. Okay. So now let's start multiplying each bit with its represent uh, uh, respective power. 1 multiplied by 8 plus 0 multiplied by 4 plus 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1 multiplied by 1. So after solving this whole uh, equation, what you're going to find is 1 multiplied by 8 will become 8 plus 0 plus 2 
2 plus 1 this will become 11 so 11 is the decimal number and this 11 is represented as uh, this 1011 in binary number so this is binary to decimal conversion okay binary to decimal So what will happen if you are going to have a larger number, for example, 5 bit, 6 bit or 7 bit number, for example, if you have this binary number 1011011, how are you going to convert this number? Remember the pattern and remember the power 2 raised to power n. So 2 raised to power 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. 2 raised to power 0, 2 raised to power 1, 2 raised to power 2, 2 raised to power 3. 2 raised to power 4 and 2 raised to power 5 and 2 raised to power 6. Okay. So now we know the powers. We can number them up our so called shorted method. But this is the uh, preferred encouraged method in CIE. They will not be going to tell you about uh, to use the LCM method that maybe you have solved in the eight years. So let me do it again. What was the number? One zero one one zero one. So one, two, four, eight, sixteen, and thirty-two. Well, so from where these numbers are coming from? This thirty-two is because this is the first. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth bit. And the sixth bit has two raised to power. Two raised to power zero, two raised to power one, two raised to power two, two raised to power three, two raised to power four, and two raised to power five. All right? So now you can simply add up only those numbers which are with the one thirty-two plus Skip the 16 because it's multiplying with 0, plus 8, plus 4. Skip 2 because it's again multiplying with 0, and plus 1. 32 plus 8 will become 40, 44, and 45. 45 is the decimal equivalent of this binary number. So we, we have done with the binary to decimal conversion. In CIE, they, they will not be going to give you any number above 8-bit uh, eight, eight long. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6-bit long. Uh, so they will not be going to give you any number above 8-bit eight uh, eight bit long. Either it's high decimal number, it's binary or whatever. Okay. So now let's do it other way around. Let's convert this uh, this particular decimal number into binary so we will also going to have an idea that if this number is coming back so that is one zero one one zero and one okay so let's convert 45 into its binary equivalent. So now how to do that? We need to convert 45. Start assigning the powers to all the bits once again. As we have practiced, uh, practiced so we can do that. One, two, what comes after two? Four. We are just following the formula two raised to power n. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, 1, 2, 4, and then we have 8, and then we have 16, and then we have 32, uh, and then after 32, if 2 raised to the power 6 will become 64, but I will not be able to take 64 because the 64 is getting bigger than the number that I need to convert, so I will not be able to take the 64, 32 is enough, okay, so what I need to do, I need to make 45 out of these numbers i have no other choice only out of these numbers so let's start making 45 let's take 
32 first. If I want to take 32 first, I'm going to take, I'll put one underneath it. Now I have 32. So if I add 32 with 16, what it, what it will become? 30, 40, 46, 48. No, I cannot take 16 because 32 plus 16 becomes 48. And my required number is 45. So we leave the 16 or we put 0 and we move ahead. We have 8. Now we have 32. 32 plus 8 will become 40. So let's put 1 underneath it. Again, so we have 40 in hand now. 40. And if we were going to add 4, what it will become? It will become 44. Let's do it. Put 1 another, uh, underneath it. So now we have 32. We have skipped 16. And we have 4. We have, we are, we have 44. So if we were going to add 2 in 44, it will become 46. We cannot take 2. We put 0, but we take 1. So what it will become? 32, 8, 4, and 1. This will become 45. Are we having the same number? Like this one. So we are having 1. So we have already done this conversion to this 45 and now we are just converted it back to the binary. So voila, we have done binary decimal and decimal to binary. That's that's it's all about. So this is what about number systems. Definitely then we will going to have, uh, then we have uh, conversion from um, binary to hexadecimal and hexa to binary and then from decimal to uh, hexa and hexadecimal uh, but we are going to pass here and we are uh, we will going to look at the book so let me discard it because my writing is not very good so I am not going to save it anyway <laughs> okay so Let's talk about, let's talk about the book. Yeah. We came here because uh, the book was taking a long, oh my God. No, it's downloaded. Thanks God. Okay. It should be in downloads. And there it is. Okay, this is the Bible of Double Two One Zero. Um, there is a new version of this book as well, but no pretty much changes. Everything is just the same. So if you get this PDF, you can easily like get the PDF, whole PDF from uh, my website. But don't let the CIE know because maybe it's they have given these books to the teachers, but they have uh, mentioned not to give it the PDFs to the students. But I'm giving it to my to my students. So, so this is the cover looks like, and these are the topics, section one, chapter one and chapter two and chapter three, everything looks like the same, even though just like you, we will going to find some more chapters because uh, they have dedicatedly uh, given logic gates in uh, second uh, chapter three. And then we have this operating system and the architecture and so on. All right. So this is the book. And they also have started from uh, number system conversions. So binary numbers and the hexadecimal number systems in this book. Uh, what you will going to see, you will going to see almost the same pattern that we have uh, already covered. They have mentioned as the powers 1, 2, 4, 2 to power 0, 1 and so on. This is a pattern that you re really need to memorize. So this is basically the decimal and this is the uh, binary number system. So when converting from binary to decimal, it's pretty easy. All those methods are given here. Just like the same that we have done. 
and they have given us some conversions as well here from kilobytes to petabyte. That's a bit early. That should be covered basically um, into data storage. But they have given this table here. So sometime in this book, sometime you will going to see a little bit jumbled up. Uh, it's because even in CI papers, what you will going to see is that some topics are merging with the other topics. So this is how it goes. Examples of binary, and these are the questions, the kind of question that comes in the paper, and then the hazardous number system, the motivation, this table, basically this binary number is equal to this zero and this tenry, and so on. So it's easy. So what's important uh, in in terms of uh, hazardous number system is that you also have to study about the uh, the uses of uh, hexadecimal number system. So, for example, memory dumps is the, uh, the use of hexadecimal number system because, as being human beings, we use only decimal number system and computer only uses binary number system. So, why we need to use hexadecimal number system? So, the reason of using hexadecimal number system are the memory dumps to represent very large numbers uh, in a small form. So, and in HTML for color palettes, basically, we use uh, uh, for color palettes here, for example, they may have given you examples here, yeah, something like this. So, this is a hexadecimal number system, FF000. Um, this hashtag is not the hashtag that we use on the Facebook, but this is being used uh, in the programming languages uh, and to represent the color palettes. So, this is the one. Another example of using. Um, the uses of hexadecimal system. So media access control, your MAC address, that is also mentioned in um, hexadecimal number systems. So this is what we actually need to do. This theory is uh, also important. And you have also seen that the theory is not much, even though you cannot say that student have to read all of this thing. Yeah, he or she may have to read all of it, they do not need to memorize it. So this is really important. They do not need to memorize this whole thing, type of method. So notes should be provided to the students, uh, or we can definitely take help from the um, handouts or the marking schemes, even for provided with this and by the CI. Thank you. So these all are the users. Then we have communication and internet technologies, again, been pretty well, pretty simple, not lengthy, uh, and um, no, not a single word should be missed out of these things from the book. The serial parallel transmission, very well explained. And, uh, but definitely, students are going to have uh, a teacher's guidance to cover these all topics. They cannot just like cover all these things by themselves. All right. So these all parity checking or the ARQ, blah, blah, this, these all things are in this. Transmission, okay. Logic gates, I guess uh, logic, uh, logic gates can be taught, the shapes of the logic gates, what they are, the truth table of each and every logic gate, uh, how you can make, uh, like possible number of combinations. If we have two number of inputs, we have three number of inputs. And if we have four number of inputs, so possible number of combinations will become 16, 8, and 4. So these things can be taught from the book. Uh, the symbol and the truth table, the symbol here. And uh, the truth table, this can be, oh, so there are a little mistake in this copy of the PDF. All right, so again, the shape and and the truth table that can be taught uh, from the book. But when it comes to the combination of the logic gates, for example, uh, these all are the shapes and the truth tables like this. And this should be uh, pretty well explained uh, on the board. Uh, if I would have time, I've definitely uh, cover uh, on that my sort of uh, board keyboard which i'm using 
for example here so for example if you are going to use the combination of the logic gifts that sh that should be that should be covered by the teacher on the board and explained pretty well so there are other methods there are other softwares which can be um and taken help from to solve the logic gates so i'm just giving you an example that this thing should be covered on the copy on the uh, on the whiteboard on the blackboard and uh, not just from you need a lot of practice this cannot um, like memorize it or read it from the book so this this part of the uh, syllabus is needed to be done with practice on board and copies so all these things all these big pictures this should be solved properly all right all these uh, equations how to make those um, uh, make those equ uh, equations and how to solve these equations and so how to solve these are very important the table will be given to you the conditions will be given to you and then you have to make a equation out of it and out of equation you have to make a circle like uh, this one so this thing should be practiced with the teacher on the board in the copy okay so logic circuit in the real world um, some real examples this is not very important in terms of the syllabus operating systems and the architecture type of operating system should be told the functions of the operating system should be told for example here we can see the different types of uh, function and each operating system should do uh, either it's an ios it's android it's windows or it's linux whatever these all are the functions that should be carried by each and every operating system that should be told in detail so just having a survey so far from the book and we have just uh, seen the syllabus i guess and now we're just looking into the book uh, i even uh, prefer my students uh, for example uh, because the course was recently changed and we have to change the notes etc but i'm i'm just frankly i'm just working on my handouts i'm just not working on the notes because this book is pretty much good you don't do not need to make make your own notes thought i am just like uh, this is my suggestion to the other teachers as well just forget about the notes let's help the uh, students by making handouts by making lots and lots of worksheets because a pretty good uh, book is already there so no need of uh, notes to put over burden on uh, students to uh, read from the book from the notes and then work for the worksheet and etc so give them book to understand and give them uh, handouts to um, uh, the kind of de definitions of the keywords that they will going to require uh, to score good in papers and practice from the worksheets that would be uh, in fine scenario okay so super architecture um, this not this picture is important but the thing is this thing is important as well so not only the type of buses one more thing that i just really want to mention that is really important is that um, that all the tables in this book and all the pictures in this book are very important one should cover these okay so these are very important one should or must cover these all topics especially the tables and the pictures from the 2210 computer science book this cambridge igcs computer science book as important so don't miss out any picture or any table from this one these all are coming in your paper and if you really want to score a star you have to done with all these tables and all these pictures you should know them just not memorize them please do not memorize because uh, this is not islamiyat or psc or english uh, but it's just treat the subject as uh, you treat mathematics not even like chemistry and physics sometimes you need to just memorize the definitions and the pictures and you can just draw them and uh, uh, get good grades but in computer you need, really need to practice understand those all things then you can score a static the paper is uh, made in such a way 
that if you are good in memory in memorizing stuff, you cannot score a static. It's really hard for you to score a static if you're just trying to memorizing each and other thing. Uh, if you really want to get a good score, you just need to practice as well. Understand, um, ask questions from your teacher again and again, even though it's just like a little bit, you know, buzzed off itself. So these kind of things are very important, these kind of pictures. All right, okay. So now we are in input and outputs. So all these types should be done. These are the outputs, this should be done. Uh, barcode is important, not the QR code. Only the theory is important from the QR code. You have to practice the bar. I'm just, I don't know why, but I'm just suspecting that this question is really coming into this uh, winters or summers. Because so far it's not there, but that's a, that is the important part of the of the syllabus. How the barcodes are made, how the barcodes are read, what are the codes of barcodes, etc. And then uh, we have um, one another thing that is monitoring and control that will come after it. Okay. So these pictures, these graphs. Uh, these are very important. So these all steps are very important to uh, understand. So this is a pretty easy, for example, if you talk about the scanner, what's happening, uh, how to scan a document, how a document is being scanned. It's pretty easy. Um, just uh, open the lid and now uh, place the paper and close the lid. And voila. No, but that's not enough. Uh, as they cover science students, we need to know a little more, uh, more detail. We need to provide a little more detail. So uh, what happens after you place the document uh, in the scanner, in the photocopier, and close the lid? You must close the lid, even though I've seen some photocopiers in Pakistan that they do not close the lid. Uh, but that's not safe. That's not handling. OK, so close the lid, and then there's a blind light that eliminates the document. And what happens in the documents uh, that um, Basically, that light uh, uh, is thrown on the document to take reflection, and that reflection is collected with the help of the mirrors. And then those mirrors collect the whole image of the document and throw it on a CCD that is charged cover device. That CCD is not only used in uh, scanners, but also used in our digital cameras and our smartphones to capture the image and then convert that image of the document or a person or anything directly into digital form. So that is what CCD is. So this whole thing should be understood. And uh, so how a facial recognition works, the four steps. These things are really important to memorize. You know, application of 3D scanning, important, very important. So don't miss such things, barcodes. This book is really well made. Um, barcodes, you have to, but these, these are the universal codes. If you're uh, mentioning zero, how to uh, mention zero on the left hand side, on the right hand side, what are the, what are the bar guards, and all those things. I've just put one video from the YouTube on the page that's really helpful. Okay. You may have seen the video. The point of sale terminal thing. That's really important. They love it. It's just like coming into paper every year and every paper. The quick response, uh, QR, the quick response uh, code. This is a new thing, the captcha that we are seeing these days uh, into McDonald's and uh, Pizza Arts and kind of stuff. Uh, they're just uh, putting these uh, uh, captures everywhere, these QR codes. In Pepsi bottle, you can also see that. You can scan it using your smartphone and uh, and a message will be instantly popped up on uh, your screen. Something like that. Little cameras, they have processors, and what processors controls these kinds of things, important. So all these things should be done. The track balls and the pointing device and the microphone, and you'll find more detail about the microphone, how uh, speech recognition and um, voice recognition is being done. So that phenomenon has been explained. Speech recognition, that's important. So 
touch screens capacitive and infrared and resistors all those types of benefits and drawbacks is important sensors are important this table is like so so much important don't miss anything from this table um you have to do this that will going to later work on this monitoring and control that can be definitely to that's just like one day one hour lecture for this only monitoring and control uh, i usually give uh, one lecture on this monitoring and control and on barcodes separately because these topics are important and they really need an understanding and a demonstration with the teacher to cover so this is the book this book will continue definitely it's pretty long and then this is output devices after input devices um and then we have this thing the memory and storage media all those things you need to cover from the book so this is the book this is an awesome book i like it you will going to like it if you will going to read it and um, then there is paper 2 i'm just skipping paper 2 uh, whole the syllabus and the explanation thing right now because i think i don't have much time uh we can definitely definitely will going to have uh, this whole thing covered into next class uh if if you are looking forward to um, get registered with me and continue into other classes we will going to uh, cover up all these topics in detail just like we have covered only the binary number system conversion so and definitely that's really not covered because uh, if we pack any topic we is not only explain it we also will going to solve the past paper questions we will going to see questions from the past papers uh and uh, from how we can also take help from the marking scheme things like that so so far i guess uh it's time to go uh but if you really want to stay tuned into upcoming classes i uh, will definitely going to let you know and definitely we will going to restart from this uh my number system conversion from the upcoming class and complete this topic thoroughly and we will going to solve the worksheets that will going to be uploaded on the site this is a site and we have this page this awesome page and in this awesome awesome page we will going to put the worksheets like there for example uh, something like this so you can download them or you can as because this is um, uploaded by me so i can only download it or, or upload the revision you can also view it here so let's see where online so these kind of worksheets will be provided to you you can solve it from home under my supervision these all are the past paper questions that are topically uh covered the number system conversion so this is how we can proceed all right so so far let's say bye bye all right so bye bye